A headache is one of the commonest symptoms experienced by people. The commonest type of headache experience is called tension headache. It is important to distinguish primary headaches from secondary headaches. The latter are due to organic problems in the brain that could be dangerous, like infections, tumors, and bleeding. A headache is called primary headache because the main problem is the headache and there is no underlying organic problem in the brain or surrounding tissues that causes the headache. These are of three main types, tension headache, migraine, and cluster headache. Tension headache is by far the commonest. It is mild to moderate in intensity and is described as a band-like sensation around the head. It is said to be due to excess contraction of the muscles of the scalp and neck. The ache could persist for hours to days. The important difference between tension headache and migraine is that it is not usually associated with vomiting, sensory symptoms or an aura. Certain factors can trigger tension headaches and these include lack of sleep, fatigue, mental stress and depression, withdrawal from caffeine, cessation of smoking, anemia, eye strain. While over the counter painkillers like brufen, naproxen and aspirin relieve the headache, repeated use causes rebound headaches which can be resistant to treatment and require steroids. If headaches do occur frequently, it is advisable to follow non-pharmacological treatment like biofeedback and cognitive behavior therapy. Migraine is a severe form of throbbing headache that typically occurs in one half of the head and it can progress to involve the whole head. It can last for 4 hours to 72 hours. If it lasts longer than 72 hours, it is called status migranosis. The headache is thought to arise from the dilatation of blood vessels on the covering of the brain, although there are no studies to prove what exactly causes a migraine. The criteria for migraine without aura include five or more episodes of headache lasting 4 to 72 hours with any two of the following. Unilateral, throbbing, moderate to severe, increased by movement, plus any one of the following. Nausea or vomiting, phonophobia or photophobia. An acute attack of migraine can be aborted by the following. NSAIDs like aspirin, brufen, and naproxen. However, long-term use is not advisable as it causes gastric ulcers and kidney failure. Triptans like sumatriptan, rizotriptan can be taken early in the attack. Ditans like lasmiditan. CGRP antagonists like eronumab. Ergot alkaloids. These can precipitate gangrene of digits in those with poor circulation and also a heart attack in those prone for it. Oral steroids can be given for intractable migraine and status migranosis. If a person has more than two attacks of migraine a month, or there are dangerous symptoms like vertigo, weakness, or sensory disturbances with it, he's advised to take medication to prevent attacks. Propranolol is a wonder drug for migraine prophylaxis and should be used as first line if not contraindicated. The drug can be started at 20 mg a day and stepped up slowly to 40 mg twice a day while monitoring BP and heart rate. Amitriptyline and other TCAs or tricyclic antidepressants are very effective for reducing the number of episodes and are used quite often to prevent attacks. Valproate and other anti-seizure medicines are used quite often for prophylaxis of migraine. But the major disadvantage of valproate is weight gain. Flunorazine is another option for migraine prophylaxis, but not as effective as the above regimes and has led to weight gain. Triggers of migraine must be avoided. These include poor sleep, erratic meals, stress, caffeine, alcohol, certain odors, bright light, etc. Non-pharmacological treatments like cognitive behavioral therapy are very effective in long-term management. Cluster headaches are the most painful among the primary headaches. It usually occurs in men in 20 to 30 year age group. The patient has severe pain around the eye with tearing on one side and nasal stuffiness. The headache doesn't cross over to the other side. The headaches are seasonal and occur in clusters with completely symptom-free periods in between. 
Certain factors like certain odors, alcohol, smoking trigger the attacks and can be avoided. To abort an acute attack, we can use oxygen, sumatriptan, and intranasal lidocaine drops. Calcium channel blockers like veropamil, oral steroids, and lithium are given to prevent attacks during seasonal change. A secondary headache occurs due to a specific organic reason. Though they are very rare, one needs to look for it in any new or worsening headache. Signs that a headache could be secondary are sudden severe headache, associated vomiting, seeing double, blurred vision, fever with headache, pain and stiffness in the neck, tenderness over the temporal arteries in a middle-aged person, altered sensorium fits, weakness or sensory loss, unusually high BP with a low pulse rate, a headache increased on coughing, a headache worse on bending forward. The most dangerous is the thunderclap headache, which occurs at the back of the head and then moves to involve the whole head. It is associated with vomiting and is usually due to an aneurysm in the brain. This can be found out by an MR angiogram and a coil can be inserted, which is life-saving. CT scan detects bleeding in the subarachnoid region after the rupture of an aneurysm. In such a case, it's a subarachnoid hemorrhage and is a medical emergency. Fever associated with headache, vomiting and double vision must be evaluated for brain infections by CT scan of the brain, with or without a lumbar puncture. Many infections present with headache, but in meningitis, the headache is prominent and there is neck stiffness. Brain tumors present more subtly with headaches slowly worsening along with some localizing signs related to the brain like loss of smell, loss of field of vision, loss of hearing, fits, etc. Temporal arthritis is an inflammation of the temporal arteries on the temples which happens in middle-aged to older people, mostly women, and need to be urgently treated with steroids to prevent blindness. The pa patient complains of pain in the temples, tenderness in the scalp, and may have sudden loss of vision. Sinusitis is common, and the patient usually has a stuffy nose. There is tenderness over the cheeks and the forehead. A simple x-ray can be used to diagnose it. Eye conditions like acute glaucoma, temporomandibular joint arthritis can also cause headaches. A good local examination is therefore necessary in any new onset headache.